Well, the kids are spending more and more time outside as it does warm up, just not today. But for some, that means a runny nose and watery eyes. So, is it allergies or a spring cold? Pediatrician Dr. Sarah Hall is here now to help us figure out the difference so we can help our kids feel better and stay outside. Good morning to you, Dr. Hall. Hi, good morning. Thank you for being here. So, why don't we break this down for parents and just help them understand? But first of all, why is it so important to even figure this out? So it's difficult, especially with children, because they can't necessarily, especially depending upon their age, they can't necessarily decipher between some of their symptoms. It, it, it can be difficult to describe. For sure. Um, and then the treatments of colds are completely different than the treatments of allergies. Right. So, and you do want to do that, right? You do want to get them the right treatment so that they can feel better. And especially with allergies, there's no reason to suffer. Right. Um, they're completely treatable, and you can get outside and be active and be comfortable. And get right out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's break it down. Okay, so you've got the symptoms. You've got the runny nose and the watery eyes. When is that a spring cold, and when is it allergies? Good question. Um, so with a spring cold, usually you, just, you have other symptoms associated. So typically there's fever or feeling unwell. Um, there can be a sore throat. There can be cough and sneezing, um, but a totally different treatment regimen than that for allergies. For sure. Allergies, on the other hand, would be symptoms of hay fever. So, the, as you said, the itchy, watery yeah. red eyes, the nasal congestion that's itchy, very uncomfortable, but quite different. Right. So itch is the main factor, mm -hmm. isn't it? Right. Okay, so once you've figured it out, okay, it's probably seasonal allergies. You can treat that. How do you treat them? So the first thing would be to avoid the allergen if you can. If you can. If you can. So let's say you're able to decipher that it's a grass pollen allergy. Uh, maybe rolling in the grass after cutting the grass isn't the best idea. Right. So if there's a way to avoid it, that's ideal. Right. Sometimes, though, there's no way. Like, it's not acceptable to have to spend time indoors and avoid being outside in our beautiful summer. Of course. So if there is a way to get outside, um, I'd suggest things like some of those over-the-counter medications. Right. Um, there are two types. There are short-acting antihistamines, which work right away and are quite effective. Um, things like Benadryl containing diphenhydramine, those kind of products. But the downside is that they can make you quite sleepy. Right. On the other hand, the longer-acting antihistamines, um, things like cetirizine, like Reactin or Allegra, right. um, take a little bit longer to work, but are very effective in keeping symptoms at bay without that fatigue. Okay. And is it okay to do with young children? Like, at what age can you start giving them these antihistamines? So it's true, especially with cold medications. You can't give anti-cold medications when kids are less than six years of age. Right. But those um, anti-allergy medications are quite safe when dosed appropriately. So just okay. being very careful about what those doses are on the box. Okay, so read it very, very carefully before mm -hmm. so you get the dosage right. Okay, so you can actually treat these then with antihistamines quite simply in these little kids if you can't avoid it outside. What if they have a cold? What can you do to help them feel better if they've got a cold? So there's not much to do for a cold, as you know. It's yeah. caused by a virus, so antibiotics don't necessarily work because right. it's not a bacteria. Right. Um, but for things like um, symptom control, uh, getting control of the fever with Tylenol and Advil, um, making sure that they're hydrated, that's probably the most important. No kidding, okay. Because um, that can help with them feeling better and also just getting, staying um, hydrated can help get them through the infection safely. Right. If you wanted to know more information, actually there's a great website yes. through the Alberta Children's Hospital okay. called the HEAL website put out yes. through the emergency department. Um, how I found it was I googled Alberta Children's Hospital and HEAL, like H-E-A-L. Wonderful. And there's really good information on when to go to the doctor, when to seek, when to seek some extra help, Perfect. what to watch for. Wonderful. Okay, so we figured it out. We've got them treated. They're able to get out there. But what if your child has asthma as well? Because can't these symptoms aggravate asthma? Um, so that's a really important question. Um, with asthma, it certainly can be triggered by allergies. And it's a bit of figuring out what your patterns of asthma are. Okay. If an allergy does treat your asthma, unfortunately, the asthma can't be treated with antihistamines. Okay, it's very good to important know. to be on those preventer puffers, right. like those steroid containing puffers. Okay. So that is what you can do if your child has asthma. Absolutely. Wonderful. And then bottom line is, you really just want to have your child feeling well so they can be active and get outside, isn't it? It's so important, especially with them, the health of children these days. Like, if there's an opportunity to get outside and play and enjoy it, and for it to be fun, it's so important. Right. So get those kids healthy and get them outside. Yes. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Dr. Hall. Thank Great you information so much. today. Wonderful.